Hi, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics. And, well, when it came to the Leave campaigns during the Brexit referendum, both Leave.eu and the official Vote Leave campaign were convicted of breaking the law in the wake of the Brexit referendum. With such a tight result, there can be no claims that it was a democratic vote. In fact, had it been a legally binding vote, such as with the Scottish referendum, for example, then it would have been overturned by the courts and rerun. As it was, because it was not legally binding, the courts could only impose fines and give the country the certainty that the referendum was invalid. The fact that we still went ahead with the process is purely down to the fact that the Conservative government get paid their donations by the very people who broke the law to get us out of the EU, and the leader of the opposition wants it as well, for both his personal politics and the damage he believes it will eventually do to the Conservative Party. In the case of Leave.eu, investigations are still ongoing about the record donations of millions of pounds which came from Aaron Banks, but who knows where. They know it was foreign money, which is in itself illegal. What they don't yet know is exactly where it came from. But it is the official Vote Leave campaign that has the most to answer for. It appealed its conviction, and only on Friday, the day we were due to exit the EU, did they decide to drop their appeal, thus putting the conviction beyond any doubt, even amongst their most ardent supporters. Now, the reason they have the most to answer for is not because their crime was greater. Leave.eu are definitely the shadiest in this den of thieves, but because two cabinet ministers, Michael Gove and Boris Johnson, were the key figures in the leadership of that campaign. In addition, Liam Fox, Ian Duncan Smith, Dominic Raab and Priti Patel were also on the committee of the campaign. So at least three people who are in the running to become our next Prime Minister fronted an illegal campaign that is shaping the future destiny of our nation. If we as a nation cover this up, then there is little hope for us. Now, we don't necessarily know that Gove and Johnson were complicit in the illegal activity as such. The courts don't say that. Certainly, Michael Gove is thick enough to have been in charge of an illegal campaign without having the slightest idea of what was really going on. But Boris Johnson categorically ruled out illegal activity when the story originally broke. Now, for him to say that, that means he must have been intimately involved in the financial running of the campaign. It also means that he must have known that it was not legal, and so he has a lot to answer for. But unlike Johnson, Michael Gove said that he couldn't commit at the time because a legal procedure was ongoing. Can't say anything. Well, it's not ongoing anymore, Mr. Gove. Your organisation has dropped its legal challenge to the conviction, and as I say, on the day when we were supposed to leave the EU. Hmm, good day to bury bad news. So they dropped it after it's too late for people to change their mind. But the point is that Gove has now no reason not to answer for this criminality now. Boris Johnson may no longer be in government, though he was at the time, but Michael Gove still is. In fact, the entire government has questions to answer. Because it was baffling that in such a tight referendum, where both of the largest campaigns, the official and an unofficial one, of the so-called winning side, were shown in court to have broken the law, that the government didn't call a halt to the proceedings until investigations concluded. Remember that the terms of the referendum not only stated that the result was not binding, but also that it didn't commit to any particular timescale for leaving the EU. We could easily have cancelled Article 50 at that point, citing problems with the validity of the referendum, and waited for all this to go through the normal processes, choosing either to go back to the original result if the courts cleared it, or which of course it didn't, or rerun the referendum after the legal processes were over and making sure that those involved could not take part in it. The government didn't do this, so all cabinet ministers are now complicit in this subversion of British law and the consequences for what comes next. They are not complying with the will of the people. They are complying with the will of criminals who are using some of their dirty money to fund the Conservative Party. Now, as things currently stand, the whistleblowers who brought this to public attention have lost their jobs, and the criminals are either in or in control of government. Nothing less than the soul of the UK is at stake, and Parliament needs to get a grip on this now. With anyone else in charge of Labour, I'd be salivating at the prospect for the way debates are going to go in the Commons next week. But as it's Jeremy Corbyn, I'm sure somehow he'll end up with Labour coming out of this worse than the Tories who will barely suffer a mark on them. These guys who are destroying our economy, our social structure and our international credibility with what has now been proven to be criminal abuse of our democracy.
So I hope you found that video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button, subscribe for further content, click the bell notification as well. And until next time, I'll see you later.